Hello, welcome to this week's episode of Cooking with Chef Mario. Don't turn the channel, it's not what you think. I got a great dish from the Middle East, the Arabian Desert. I just got back from a grand trip. I want to share it with you. Come on back in a few minutes. I'm going to show you how to make this marvelous vegetarian dish, no cook scenario, called Turkish Cuckoos. Right back with Chef Mario. Hi, my name is Matt Flounders and I attended St. Michael the Archangel School. Uh, I've now gone on to uh, the University of Pittsburgh uh, to study neuroscience. At this point in time, I'm a neuroimaging data analyst at the University of Pennsylvania in Philadelphia. Um, something that really uh, triggered this foundation and has built up uh, my current life, started at St. Mike's, was this inherent desire, curiosity that I have for all kinds of new things. I remember specifically in third grade I learned all about Spanish and this was my first and earliest exposure. And this is something that I think uh, fostered an innate desire and curiosity in going forward in my career. Uh, so thank you St. Mike's for offering me that. Looking for the best price on a mattress? Shop Mountain Mattress. Looking for the perfect mattress to fit your body? Shop Mountain Mattress. How about a Maxi Comfort lift chair? Shop Mountain Mattress. Or a Golden Companion scooter to get you anywhere? Shop Mountain Mattress. Mountain Mattress is located at 583 Morristown Drive in Bath, PA. Mountain Mattress is where friends send friends. Always shop Mountain Mattress where the customer is always on top. Have you ever experienced water damage inside your home or business due to a leaky pipe or a slow drip behind a wall? Be smart. Stop the leak before it happens using the latest smart app technology. With SmartFlow Pro, your all-in-one water security system, you can monitor your pressure, water temperature, water flow, and detect leaks by phone, receiving emails, texts, or push notices, and use the automated shutoff to stop every drip from wherever you are. Are you ready for 2020? Keep your home or business 100% leak-free with SmartFlow Pro. Hi everybody, Chef Mario here again from Nazareth, Pennsylvania. I'm really glad you tuned in this morning you know, to watch this episode and you're probably wondering, what in the world is this guy wearing? You know, did, did, did he change his religion or something? And no, I just had a geographic experience. You know, I've, I've had some really great times traveling the last several months and uh, all over the world. I mean, literally a dozen different countries and uh, the Middle East was one of them. Typically, uh, specifically Dubai had a great time there. I got this outfit in Dubai and I learned a lot about culinary stuff you know, throughout my travels, and I always like to impart some of that with you. So with that said, today I want to come to you with this marvelous dish that can be cooked any time of the year. Summer dish, it could be a winter dish, it's a dish for vegetarians, it's not necessarily vegan, well actually it is vegan, a dish for vegans, it's, it's a side dish, it's a main course, it's ancient, it's authentic, and it's very, uh, very ethnic. So with that said, I want to introduce you to a little, I've never done a segment like this before where I talk about, you know, Arabic or Middle Eastern food. And you, you know and I know there is a large contingency of um, Arabic and Middle Eastern, um, you know, representatives in, in the Lehigh Valley, whether from Syria or, you know, Lebanon or, uh, you know, places that affect and, and uh, you know, whether it be uh, you know, Israel or um, Turkey, all over the place. Uh, lots of great people, and we need to celebrate some of that that culture, and to celebrate uh, some more importantly on this show the cuisine that they offer, and that's what I'm really jazzed about is the cuisine. So with that said, I'm 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 kind of in the moment with the outfit, and and I, I hope you can appreciate you know just just my artistic expression here. With that said, Turkish couscous. Now we've heard of couscous, we buy them in a box at the supermarket and we put them in a pot of boiling water and we throw a tab of butter and it's on the table and there we go. Well, you know, couscous is a little more than that and we could do better than that. So with that said, we're gonna, we're gonna make a dish today it's, that's really refreshing vegetarian filling. But I'll tell you where the secret is. The secret is in these herbs and you gotta have fresh herbs. In this instance, we have, we have mint, um, we have, we have what's called flat parsley, or some people call it Italian parsley, and then we have coriander. That's really the, the secret to uh, making this marvelous dish. And you know, so first things first, there's a little bit about the, uh, the ingredients. We have, we have couscous here, 
that, um, you know, the couscous, they come generic here. You can buy them in the supermarket. And I like to buy them, you know, uh, raw, unseasoned, uncooked, obviously. If you can get foreign-made couscous, you're, you're really better off. This particular couscous, as with most of them, historically, is made from Durham uh, semolina wheat. Believe it or not, very similar to like Italian pasta, but it's their rendition of it, obviously. And it's very unique how they get these little, little pellets here. Don't know how they do it, but they do a great job at it. And we're gonna, we're gonna, in this recipe, I'm gonna be very specific with you so you can replicate this at home and you can have a nice ethnic meal and you can really surprise your family, your husband, your wife, whomever the cook in the family is. And we're gonna take this first cup of dried generic couscous, we're gonna go in a bowl with it. That's your first step in making this marvelous dish. The next step is the only cook in the whole deal. The only, the only cook in the whole deal is the hot water. But before we do the hot water, we need a teaspoon of smoked, smoked paprika. Just, just uh, spread it in there, you know, generously. And then we need a teaspoon of dry cumin. Dry cumin. And then we're going to mix the mix, if you will, um, just so it blends just nice. But when the water gets in there, I'll show you in the next step, it's going to do a lot of the work for you. Now, you want to initially salt and pepper to taste. In this case, just a, a quasi-generous pinch of salt, a lot less pepper, black ground pepper. will get you started. The only cook in the whole deal, you could do it in the microwave or on the stove. Here it is, ladies and gentlemen, a little Arabic water. That's a pun. There's no such thing as Arabic water. And we're, our goal is to, is to basically cover the couscous. So in this case, we've got, we've got submerged couscous, liquefied here like that, with that little uh, seasoning effect. Oh, I just did a drizzle. Hold on. Mop up aisle nine, drizzle right there. Okay, now the next thing you want to do is you want to get your Dollar Tree um, cellophane wrap that never works. Remember years ago, Saran Wrap used to work? That was a good company. I don't know what happened, but here we go. We're going to use this stuff that doesn't stick and we're going to put it on there. I don't know what the Arabs do. Maybe they put like a you know, goat stomach over it. I don't know what they do but maybe they have saran wrap. Here we go. Now we're gonna let that just sit and do its thing. In the meantime, we have some preparation involved here. There's several ingredients. It's mostly any way you wanna do a combination except for one or two things. There is a chronological science to it, but cucumbers is a very important part of, the, uh, of this, this traditional recipe. Now this couscous thing, you know, it, it really goes back. You know, you, you know and I know I like to talk about the history of the food or the ingredients real quick. And this thing, believe it or not, didn't start like in the heart of the Middle East as you and I would, would tend to think, whether, you know, whether it be Turkey, Iran or somewhere. It really started in the northwest part, from what I've read, the northwest part of, of Africa. So way up in the corner, the top left corner of the country, you know, and, and there, there are certain regions and countries there in the continent, you have places like um, Algeria, Morocco, and Tunisia. And that's really where the coos, the camera on me, if, if you could, that's really where the couscous, the couscous started. So it kind of migrated uh, west, if you will, a thousand years later, and, and the Arabs really um, they really perfected it. I'm sorry about the camera, but back to the, the, the slicer. We have like a julienne type slice on the cucumbers and you want to make little cucumber um, pellets almost. You don't want uh, large, large bites of cucumbers like in your typical summer cucumber salad. You want to you wanna keep them diced just, just like that. Maybe I need a separate bowl here to put my ingredients in over here. We'll put the cucumbers there. Thank you. So that's, that's a little bit how you want to do the cucumbers. So yeah, back to the history of this thing. You know, I think the tradition of the style of food in Northwest Africa is, is I hope I'm pronouncing it correctly, but it's Maghribi, Maghribi style of, of cooking. And, and typically, 
the couscous scenario, you know, is a main staple in, in many dishes. And there's, what's neat about it is there's a lot of ways to prepare couscous. It's not just pour boiling waters over it and, and put your tab of butter. There, you know, a lot of times they, they made like a stew. I don't know the name of it because I can't pronounce it, but they got this stew and they put it over top of the couscous. Uh, you can serve the couscous hot. You could serve them cold. Uh, many, many different ways. But what a marvelous um, side dish or main dish in the, the Arabic world. So we've got our herbs here. I can work on them a little bit so you get the idea. Here we have, this is important. This is, this is uh, cilantro. So, you know, the original recipe from my Turkish friend that I met over in Dubai. That's where I got this recipe, by the way. I, 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 I met up with a gentleman um, who we talk culinary or when we talk business. I always like to pick people's brains, you know, when, they, when we talk about their, their traditional foods, their homeland, where it comes from. And, uh, you know, he tells me that we need, we need coriander in one of the, uh, in one of the recipes. And I said, coriander, wait a minute. I knew coriander as, you know, as a, as a seed. And um, basically, I don't know if you know this, coriander is basically cilantro. Over in the English, the British word is, uh, is coriander. In the Latin rendition for America, South America, our native uh, South American friends here, uh, they call it cilantro. And, um, you know, we, coriander is actually the dry seed of, um, is the dry seed of the, the herb expression. We can't dry cilantro by, you can't go to the supermarket and, hey, give me some dried cilantro. It doesn't work. The dried seed effect is called coriander. So that's a little bit about the herb uh, aspect of what we're doing here. So we're going to finally chop some of these herbs and put them in their perspective place for a moment. I mean, I'm, I know they all go together eventually, but I like to keep things kind of separate. Now we have mint. Here's mint. This is a marvelous um, staple in the Middle Eastern culture. Uh, it's mixed with many different uh, uh, salads. I even think that you know the Syrians, I think they use it in kibbe, I'm not sure. Um, it's used in things like tabbouleh and uh, in all sorts of cold Middle Eastern uh, salads. It, it's a marvelous, marvelous herb. It, I don't know if it's indigenous over to there. You know and I know that sometimes Mint grows wild along the fence rows in, in America, northeast here. I remember as a kid always, you know, having mint next to the house. And the, the guy that cut the grass would chop it down. And my grandmother would get really upset when that happened. You chopped my mint. <laughs> so we got them all chopped up here pretty much. Now we're going to add another little special effect. Depends on your heat element. And that is, uh, that is a chili. You know... This is, this is all to taste. You know, you can, you can use a chili like this. In Italian, they call it uh, uh, peperoncini. You know, in, in the Spanish, they call it something else. You want to get, you want to get the seeds out of it because some people got that um, diverticulitis, <laughs> you know, or they just don't like hot. So we're going to bring, we're going to bring the seeds out and we're going to make the chili super tiny very very minuscule bites of chili because you don't want to overpower somebody but I use I use a whole chili in in, in my recipe because uh, now it all depends on the severity and the heat of the particular chili you're using because you can get a small piece of chili that can rock a whole pot of soup then you get a real big chili that's you know quasi quasi tame and it really doesn't bother you but this one here is in the medium so we'll do that all right we got our chili done, we got our onion, I mean, excuse me, our tomato. That's another key part. And how you dice those tomatoes is just like you see them. You want to core first, obviously. A lot of this is cooking 101, but we get the idea. You want to, I don't know how many centimeters that is, but roughly three-eighths of an inch. You can use a kind of a sharp knife like this. I find when I use a cleaver knife like this, that when I go against the tomato, sometimes it smashes it depending on the firmness of the tomato. But... Um, in this case, I've got a pretty, a pretty firm, hot, um, what do you call it, tight tomato, vine ripened. You know, if you have a fresh garden tomato and you attempt to do this with a cleaver, you're going to have tomato soup everywhere. But in this case, because it's winter, we got this type of tomato. So we're back. That should be enough. We've got two tomatoes for the recipe. You've got a cup 
you got a cup and a half of each one of the herbs. Lemon. How important is a lemon to this deal? Very important. So we're, we're going to make sure we prep our lemon correctly. One whole lemon. Make sure it's a juicy one. Don't buy a hard lemon. Don't be afraid that a lemon has a little bit of brown spot on it. You know what that means? That means it's ran its course in its life cycle and the lemon is ready to be used at its optimal yield. When you buy a super hard lemon, you're in trouble. You could squeeze that thing with a vice grip and you're gonna get like two drops of juice out of it. This one here is a very, look at that, very supple lemon, spongy, that's what you want. So keep working that lemon like you're working Play-Doh or you're, you're, making, you're making some kind of pizza dough. Now she's ready. So we'll cut that lemon in half this way, preferably. You're gonna need a lemon dish and you're gonna squeeze the daylights out of that lemon with all your might. Look at that, look at the juice out of that. Now I know I need one of them jiggers that gets the seeds out, I get it. But you know what? When it's, when it's last minute, you can't find this stuff in a kitchen that has everything. So, so you have to improvise, overcome and adapt. That's the Arabic way. Well, maybe it's, it's the best way. So this is what we're doing. We're making sure we got plenty of lemon juice because that is the key. And don't be afraid to get a little bit of that pulp in there. We're going to toss that out. We're going to come back over here and we're going to make Mr. Lemon clean. We're going to process our lemons. Got the bulk of the pulp out, got the seeds in the trash. Now we've got, we got pure homogenized lemon juice right there. Lastly, in this whole, this whole expression of Arabic delight is you want about a half of a large purple onion, okay? So this onion, I guess you want to go this way. You can use any kind of sharp knife, you know. This isn't the best knife for this. Let me try something else. Let me try. All right. Not the best onion cutting skills right there, is, was it? You know, you wonder what they do in the Arab world 100 years ago. I don't know. Maybe they use. All right, so we're gonna look for little tiny dices of the onion, about three quarters of a, of a scenario like this. Yeah, I really had some great times over there in Dubai. I was on a business trip. I spent about, uh, you know, 10 days there, several other trips, and um, you know, 218, 219, especially latter part 219, I really, I really got around. I got to, I got to Vietnam, I got to Thailand, Bangkok, I got to Taiwan, I got to Qatar. I mean, I really saw some great places. I was in Hong Kong just a few weeks ago. Long airplane flights, long flights. Nonetheless, when you go, you get to taste the street food, and that's incredible. And I, I feel like that guy Zimmerman a little bit on that crazy food channel where he goes and tries all those exotic foods. I got a little flavor what that guy went through. But this is a tame version of what we're gonna to do today with this, uh, this Arabic special. So, how are we coming along here? It looks like we got everything prepped. We're getting ready to marry. Back in a few moments, we're gonna show you how to make this quick tabbouleh, excuse me. <laughs> Turkish couscous, excuse me. Turkish couscous, I've been around the world so much, my head's spinning. Turkish couscous, right back with you in a few moments. Hi, I'm Cliff with ABE Carter Center. Your brakes make noise? 
First thing in the morning when the car is cold, your first couple stops, that's normal. Today's brakes absorb moisture readily. You'll get a fine layer of rust on the rotors. Until you scrape it off, it's gonna make some noise. But cars that brakes that make noise after you're driving and when they get hot, there's something going on with those brakes. Does it pulsate when you stop? Does the pedal, is the pedal mushy feeling? You have to pump it to stop. Your brakes are, are in need of attention. Time to get them looked at. I'm Brad Baylor, owner of Baylor's Top Notch Tree Service. This is my wife, Samantha Baylor. Mm -hmm. I started my business about 10 years ago, and I didn't know much about accounting, but I knew trees. So I got myself a little bit of trouble with the IRS, and thanks to Corvino and Verwise, uh, they took a quarter million dollars that I owed them, and turned it into 3,500. And by the way, going to Corvino and Verwise was my idea. Jim Corvino here at Corvino and Verwise. We help people resolve tax problems every day. My name is G.B. Harkins. Um, what I appreciate most about St. Mike's was teaching me the foundation of how to be a student athlete that, because that's something that I used throughout my life in high school and in college as well. Um, and also, you know, the family environment. It's a tight-knit group and anytime I see somebody from St. Mike's out in public, whether it be working out or at the grocery store, even the most random places, you know, go up to them, say hello, give them a hug. Um, Went on to Central Catholic High School, uh, and then I went on to attend Ursinus College, where I played lacrosse, uh, and then I developed a career. Uh, first step was at ADP, and now I'm working at a company called Cryo Concept. So thank you, St. Mike's, uh, for allowing me to attend your school for eight plus years. You know, I started back in preschool up until you know eighth grade graduation. Taught me a lot of values. Taught me how to be a compassionate individual which I, you know, obviously still use throughout my, most of my life. Water damage inside your home or business due to a leaky pipe or a slow drip behind a wall? Be smart. Stop the leak before it happens using the latest smart app technology. With SmartFlow Pro, your all-in-one water security system, you can monitor your pressure, water temperature, water flow, and detect leaks by phone, receiving emails, texts, or push notices, and use the automated shutoff to stop every drip from wherever you are. Are you ready for 2020? Keep your home or business 100% leak-free with SmartFlow Pro. Chef Mario making Turkish couscous, a very customary uh, Middle Eastern uh, Arabic type food. Uh, wonderful stuff. If you're wondering about the, the outfit, I, I just got back from Dubai and had a great time. I, I've been to like eight, nine countries in the last four months. Maybe that's why you haven't seen me as much, but nonetheless, I'm back. I got a lot of stories, a lot of recipes, and food is fun. This is what we're doing. So we're in the tail end of putting together the couscous dish with um, Turkish style, with all these lovely fresh ingredients. You know, when you eat this, you don't need a side vegetable. You don't need a fresh, you got it all right here. I'm gonna show you how to make this a perfect vegetarian meal, even a perfect protein meal. No cook, no grease, no trans fat. Here we go. We've already got the couscous quasi-fermented in our warm water. So what we wanna do is we wanna, we wanna break them up a little bit. We wanna make sure they're nice and fluffy. We've just added you know, a couple cups of hot water, good you know, filtered hot water on top of our generic couscous in our previous segment or early passages of the, of the show. Now we've got a lovely um, couscous, um, we'll call it fluff mix. So you want to use a tomato puree. If you don't have a tomato puree, it's okay. You can use like a sauce. No, no basil, none of that Italian nonsense, pardon the pun. You want to put a little dash there and a little dash there. Roughly a tablespoon and a half, two tablespoons. And you want to, you want to mix it through. It's going to give it color and it's going to give it consistency. Okay? And that's what you're looking for. Um, I might want to, I might want to sprinkle just a little bit more. There we go. There we go. We should have that effect now. Color and consistency. And this is this is served cold, by the way. This is not a heated kind of side dish with your, you know, whatever. But but quite frankly, this dish is served on the side, you know, with uh, traditional lamb. And I said earlier in the segment some stew that they use over there in uh, Turkey and Syria and things that affect. Don't know the names of them. I don't want to embarrass anybody by trying to pronounce them. I'm just a guy. I'm a cheesesteak guy from Lehigh Valley. I like food. 
and I like a little bit of culture. We've got our couscous mix. Now we can start blending. We're gonna put our one generous helping of a large cucumber in there. We're gonna put our tomatoes, dice real nice. We're gonna put our onions. It looks like a lot of onion, but trust me, when it gets in there, the yellow is not a pungent onion. It's gonna give you the right balance. We're gonna put our herbs, that's critical. Here's the herbs. We got cilantro, or coriander, pardon me. We've got flat parsley, commonly known as Italian parsley. And then we have the coveted Middle Eastern mint, goes right in there. Okay, now for heat effects, we talked about the, the chili in there, a very finely diced chili. We're gonna make the dressing now. Real easy, folks. The dressing is cold, it's non-fattening, it's got those omega-3s in it, it's got the right kind of acid, the right balance, the right flavor you're looking for, and it, uh, it's just lovely. It's such a, a bitey, springy type effect. When you have this dish, I'm telling you, you are gonna absolutely love it. Not quite ready yet, but we're gonna add that entire lemon juice there. Gonna mix it around just right. We're gonna put a little bit of olive oil. Places like Tunisia, uh, Lebanon, uh, Israel, Italy, places like that make wonderful olive oil. Roughly three to four tablespoons, you're gonna need that. Black pepper to pinch. Salt, you can almost go saltless if you want. That's how good this meal is. In my case, I'm a salty, so I'm gonna do a little pinch of salt. I'm gonna take these two spoons. I'm gonna gingerly try to mix this without making you know a, a kindergarten mess here but it's starting to come together remember folks this is for all intents and purposes this is vegetarian i suppose it's vegan because there's really no nothing derived from an animal here so you're you're going to get you know you're going to meet those dietary needs if you're on a strict regime or you've got some kind of a you know health issue it's wonderful for people who, uh, you know, can't have, you know, some of those historic uh, acidic foods that, that put us in a compromised situation. It's really, really um, beneficial for your health. Let me get a quick wipe down here, and I'm going to plate up a little bit. I'm going to try to close this episode out with a little, little curbside appeal for you, if I can get a plate. Don't be afraid to give a helping of about six ounces on that plate. Oh, that's absolutely marvelous. Now, typically, like I said, you can serve this by itself. It's almost a full meal. It does lack the protein effect. So if you wanna to go to the next step and take it out of the vegan step, you can incorporate some other traditional Arabic fare with it, call it um, stuffed grape leaves you know, from, from Turkey, from those places, or Greece. You got feta for your protein, dried Syrian olives, folks. Pita, of course, standard carbohydrate Middle East where they grab everything like that. Uh, doesn't take a lot, just a spoon, and you're in business. Let me tell you something, folks. This meal here is a full meal. You can eat this seven, eight, nine o'clock at night when you come home, and you won't, when you go to bed, you won't feel overwhelmed or have nightmares. It's light fare, it's healthy for you. It's got everything you need. I am so glad I could share this episode with my little trips around the world. I hope you appreciate it. And uh, I, I, I wanna share all these different dishes with you from the Asia, the Middle East, from Italy, from Pennsylvania. We got lots of stuff in store uh, this year, 2020. I wish you all the best. I hope you enjoy this wonderful Turkish couscous Arabic fare. All the best to you. God bless all of you. Have a great week. Take care. Hi, I'm Cliff from ABE Car Care. Two locations in town here, Tillman Street and South Fifth Street. How often do you check your tires? How do you know you need to check your tires? Well, the obvious thing would be you're driving down the road and your steering wheel's crooked, or the car is pulling. Could be as simple as you're low on air, you need to check your tires. Or you could need an alignment. 60% of today's cars are out of alignment. With our potholes, it happens very quickly. How do you know you need an alignment? Well, aside from the obvious symptoms, if you look at your tire and check the tread wear, if it's not even across the tread, your alignment's out. This tire is beyond, is, is beyond saving. 
but it was preventable with an alignment.